Lord. And the Lord, you shall have no other God beside you. And the Lord, and beside you, you shall have. You shall have no other God. You should have no other. Oh, one of the uh, things I do like about um, the Quran, isn't it? Still, it's not changed. One of the problems I think with some of the other religious texts is that it's, it's, it's not changed. Yeah, but do they have like original copies of like the Torah? Like when was the Quran four thousand years old? I don't know if they're really exactly the same. I don't know if we can. We can. We can't. We can't really know that. You go to the museum in Israel where they found the Dead Sea Scrolls together with the rest because they were stabbed by the Romans. Yeah. Oh, but even then, the Romans. Surely the Jewish faith would be not just called Imran. Imran. Just called Imran. Go over Israel in like what 46 AD. So. I think what's evident is that, and this is quite documented, that the Quran is what it, it was when it was revealed. Sorry? No, no, of course it's not. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right, no, you're right. Of, of course. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's, uh, I think it probably, yeah. No, no but, I, but I think, I think the difference here is, you see, and you might want to put another strap on there, because just again, I think the thing is, we can only go by what we have now, right? Mm. And we know that the Quran is as it was when it was revealed, and there's a lot of evidence to, support that claim so it's not just a frivolous claim made by muslims because we love our religion and we're biased but even if you look at uh academics who are not muslim you know uh, angelica newith from germany or whatever you know they regard through the academic and she's a you know a professor in the arabic language and, it, and much of her work is about the quran and there's no doubt in her mind that it's the same author, not different hands, haven't touched it. And in fact that it is preserved. So it's not even a claim that we make on behalf of Islam or in behalf of Muslims. Of course, that doesn't necessarily make it correct, the fact that something is preserved, right? Uh, but that's a different discussion and a different perhaps argument that we can get into. But, but preservation um, and its authorship being one yeah. is not really contested, to be honest. There may be people who come up with uh, their own theories, but you won't find those within re renowned academic circles. They tend to be evangelical circles who come up with statements and come up with sort of spurious evidence that they think is evidence. And I think that's the major difference between the Quran um, and many of the other scriptures, really, that we see. You know. Where, where are you from? You said you're from Ealing. Well, I'm not even where I'm from. Well, one of the reasons I walked over is so you're comparing all of these religions, and so obviously, I'm going to say only about your talking from the point of Islam. Yes. Would you not say that this sort of is, is, might not be helpful because this, it shows all the similarities? So it shows that you're maybe it's not that that unique, or it doesn't. How you? Is this, I don't get this. How this is helping you well, showing how similar it is? Th well, the thing is, is you see, when something is not unique or different. Yeah. There are certain potential reasons as to why those similarities may exist. One of them could one of those could be rationally that they've copied one another. That's a, that's a rational possibility. Yeah, yeah. But the other one could be that the source was the same for all of them. Do you yeah. see my point? Yeah, yeah. So where we have this propensity even in remote tribes in the Amazon or whatever to find something to focus on to worship we do find this everywhere all over the world right so we have to ask the question you know where does this innate predisposition come to to recognize something greater than what they were you see and could it be that the source actually was the same uh, you know the same God that sent messages to all of these people yeah, but and, well, well, we believe. Well, we believe, in fact, in Islam, that Allah does not warn a pe Allah does not punish a people until He sends them a warner. So we believe that everyone has had received a warner, has received a guide. Now, obviously, over time, that message can be lost. It can be diluted. It can be changed. It can be corrupted. And I think we can actually see how often these things have happened. So for example, if you look at Hinduism, actually in the oldest, most sacred Vedas, the oldest scriptures of, of Hinduism, God is one, God is absolute, God is eternal, there are no statues, there are no images of God, 
nothing else warrants your love or your attention or your submission except for the one and only God. But when we look at how it's transformed, now we have idols of elephants and of cows have become sacred and you can bow to this and bow to that. And, and you see, and their argument is very similar to the argument that the pagans of Arabia before Islam came, they made the same argument. And they said, God is too holy. We cannot approach God directly. So we approach God through these, uh, you know, through these other intermediaries. And this is exactly what the pagans said to the, to the, to the Muslims uh, at, when Islam first came into Arabia, which is that we're not worshipping these idols. We're worshipping Allah because they had the name Allah before even Islam uh, was uh, presented to them. Right? They said that we, we, submit, we submit to Allah, the creator of the worlds, the heavens, the universe, but these are our intermediaries. And this is what many faiths, like you said Christianity, you know, they say, oh, we don't worship Jesus, we don't worship Mary. But if you're standing in front of a statue and you're asking Mary or you're asking Jesus, then I would humbly say that you've... The churches, the Catholics do yeah, of course. Uh, yes, of course. Mary in the world. Yes, of course. The so with oh, wait, Jude... So, the, um, so the, they're talking to the pagans. So before that, before uh, the Muslims come along, would the, what would happen to the pagans? Would they, when they die, would they, and to their soul, would they go to, to hell before Muhammad came? Well, we, like, we, have, we have some explicit statements which say that a person who associates partners with Allah and does not attain forgiveness, for them is hell. So do you punishment have of to, hell. You have to believe in Allah to go to not go to hell. We believe that Allah has placed a predisposition in everybody's hearts, all in all of creation. Mm. And in fact, even somebody who is not exposed to Islam or the name Allah, as long as he acts upon his predisposition to recognize the Creator, which is what we do find in fact in very remote remote tribes as well, right? That they recognize something much greater, far greater than themselves. And as long as they live in accordance with their fitrah, their predisposition, so they know intrinsically it is wrong to kill, it's wrong to steal, it's wrong to rape, they know something in their heart, there's a, a, a trigger. If they, if they act upon that, then for them is paradise. But if you receive the message of Islam I can't, am I receiving the and you today? are convinced of its truth yeah. and then you openly deny it, then you're accountable. No. But if, if, of course, the speaker like myself is an amateur and he doesn't... Not until, yeah. No, no, he, and, well and, and he perhaps says things that are wrong and you think, oh, that sounds a bit... You know, not, not, I'm not really interested, that's all wrong to me, or whatever it is, and you're not convinced, then there's still some room for hopefully yeah. in the future, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And I think that makes sense as well, because if the God that created you, sustained you, and now you recognize in your heart that indeed that God exists, and that this is what he wants me to do, and then you deny it, I think yeah. you can argue that that's a... That's open yeah. transgression, open denial of the of the truth, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, what do you, what do you believe? I mean, are you? Are you uh, uh, so, well, the, well, I think the point I'm like Jay now is I believe everyone's everyone here. Their religion is only based on history and geography. If you were born in Japan 300 years ago, you'd worship ancestors. If you were born in America 500 years ago, yes. you'd believe in the sun god. You know? Yes. So, like that's what. So, so that's why a lot of these religions we're talking about. They say there's only one true god, or you have to believe in that. Yes. And the implication then. Like you said, that's what I was asking about the warning. The implication is then, if you tell it, if you like, the, are these people wrong? Are all those people who were born a thousand years ago in different places who've never heard the word of Allah, never heard the word of Jesus Christ or Moses? They're all going to hell, unfortunately. We don't believe that. Wrong, uh, like, we, we, yeah. don't, we don't believe that. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's so if the religion hadn't been spread to them, so they yeah, I, I, I still think. So we believe, for example, on. that on the day of judgment, yeah. there will be some that may be tested at that time. Right. and allocated paradise or hell or whatever, they'd have a different test. Yeah. Because obviously we believe Allah is merciful and you know he loves what's best for his creation. Yeah. And so somebody who's never heard about uh, God, never heard about religion, maybe lives on a very remote island somewhere. Yeah. I think we can all agree that for that person to just be simply thrown into hell, mm. we would argue, well, he doesn't know. He yeah. never received the message. 
But we believe that because God is just, yeah. all just, that he will be or she will be treated with justice, with fairness. And that does not mean, as certain other faiths do believe, you're quite right. Certain yeah. other faiths say, well, you're condemned to hell yeah. just because, uh, you know, or, or, a, 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 a freak or accident or, or circumstance of you being born in some remote yeah. place. You see my well, point? I don't even want to be remote. Like, so sort of, that's the remoteness of the geography, but like history. I don't think, so there's no one, um, before like, um, there's no one there's no, there's no, in London, there's been no Christians in um, like Japan sure. or India until people went there. So the religion only really works through people spreading it. It's not. It's none. None of them have come up organically. No one's like oh, to, like being spoken to by no one in Japan or Australia 300 years ago. So I think Jesus has appeared to me. Yes. Or I think that has. Yes. And that's, I don't think there's any account of that ever yes. happening. No. So I, well, I, no I would, if, if, why why would no, God but, ever appear? To no. But I, I would agree with you. But you see, the thing is within Islam. The criteria for um, forgiveness and for mercy and, and, to, and have the possibility of entering paradise does not mean